All right, so here's a look at our starting piece. Let's get cracking. First of all, I'm gonna chuck on some paint stripper. I've never used any paint stripper before, so this is my first time. Um, it goes on nice and thick, and I've just got a spatula, which I'm using to scrape it off. I did learn that you can't let it dry because it's way harder to take off. So I do this a couple of times and then I switch to a metal scraper and here you can see it comes off a lot, lot better. So next I take off all the doors and the hinges. I just keep all the hinges and screws off to the side in a couple of Ziploc bags. That ensures that I don't lose anything and it's all there ready to go for when I put them back on. Next up, I go in with the sander just to smooth all the surfaces out after that paint stripper. So like I said, it's my first time using it, so I'm sure um, after a couple of goes, you can get a, a bit less patchy result, but that was my first time. So I've just gone back in and you can see here, just after a quick sand, it already looks a hundred times better. Here's what it looks like after a couple more runs over with the sander. I'm just working on the draw fronts now. Um, so I've just got a drink bottle propping it open while I work as I've got it laying on its back. Key time to sand the doors. So I've just removed the glass inserts from them so that I can sand them without breaking anything. And here, as you can see, are the glass inserts. Now I just flipped them over to the back and in the side, they had these little plastic things wedged inside, just holding the glass in place. So I just used a flat head screwdriver to pop them out and um, carefully just slid out the glass. So I'm just gonna keep the glass. I don't need it for this project as I'm gonna replace it with some rattan, um, but just keep anything you take away from anything that you do aside, just in case you need it for one of your next projects. All right, so I've sanded the doors down. I was just going to leave the inside stain and now I'm tossing up between sanding back just the shelves and painting the inside white. So I'm going to just use a screwdriver to take the shelves out as they, as you can see there, they're screwed in. Um, so I'll just see how I feel once I take it out. It's been a long day of sanding. Okay, so I've sanded everything that I want um, to keep natural and now I'm going to clean it all up and prep the surfaces that I want to paint. So I'm going to paint the interior here along with the shelves, which I've already removed and put away. And then I'm just going to paint the sides and the back of this. Um, so look, don't worry if you get a little bit of scratch marks because that's all going to be painted. I am going to, just for a little bit of detail, keep the edges here and here, the natural wood. So we'll tape that off later. But first of all, I'm just gonna give it a good clean. I've got a microfiber cloth to get all the dust off. Um, so I've gone around and done that. And now I'm just gonna give it a wipe down. So I've got it all taped off and ready to go for my primer and stain blocker. And for that, I'm just using the Dixie Bell Boss. I find it effective and easy to use does have a bit of a smell but most of the primers and stain blockers do. Uh, I'm just painting it on with a paintbrush and then smoothing it out with my roller. Now there's a couple of other primers and stain blockers on the market. I've got the Dulux Precision which I haven't tried as yet but I have recently purchased so I'll let you know how that goes and the Zinister bin in the red uh, which works awesome as well. start bleaching your piece. I am just using some white key bleach I just got from the local supermarket. I'm going to use that plastic cup to measure two parts bleach to one part water and just this stainless steel bowl to mix it in. Just using a standard paintbrush which I'm going to use to apply it on and this is my piece here. So I'm just going to start with one coat, see what she looks like and we'll reassess and go from there. Okay, so here's our mix. It's all ready to go. I'm just using a regular paintbrush to apply it. So you're just going to go 
around your whole piece, apply on the bleach, um, fully let it dry, see what it looks like and if you're happy with the result and then go from there. Now with this piece, I ended up applying three separate coats of the bleach um, before I was happy with the overall look. see what it looks like when it's drying it looks a little patchy a little yellow but don't be alarmed it will dry nice and pale you can sort of see it here in the corner starting to dry it will soak in some areas more than others um, just give it some time and it will look beautiful so the bleach is all dried and as you can see it's a really nice pale color um, which is exactly what we want so what we need to do now is just go over it with some water um, or some vinegar and water. I've got some vinegar um, just to neutralize it because otherwise when you try and paint over it or put anything over it, it's going to react. Um, so just grab your vinegar and water, just give it a rub all over and then um, you'll find that it raises up the wood just a little bit. So we're just going to give it a nice fine sand before we go ahead and start to get the finishing look that we're after. All right, time to work on the doors. Now I'm actually just using this cloth that I got from the dollar store. Um, it's actually just a Hessian table runner, which I thought would look amazing in our doors. So um, luckily enough, it's exactly the width that I need it. I'm gonna use the glass that was pre-existing and use that as my template to cut to size. And I'm probably gonna just wedge the glass in behind the material so that it's nice and tight. Um, in the door so that way it's nice and sturdy nice and safe and we've got the look that we want as well as you can see my pieces are kind of crinkly so look I'm gonna bring them upstairs give them a good iron um, I'm just gonna spray a little bit of water on them to flatten it out and then go over it with a good old house iron and straighten those bad boys out now it's time to work on the handles. So instead of buying brand new ones, I've decided to update the existing ones. So I've got some PVA glue and some twine, and I'm just gonna use the twine and wrap it around the ring portion of the handle. Uh, if you can see just in the background there, I've got a couple that I've already completed, um, but follow along here and I'll show you exactly what I did. So first of all, you're just gonna tie off your string just at the start there, as you can see. And I've left myself with a bit of excess. So what I'm gonna do with that is just bring it to the side, down the side of the ring there, and just wrap the twine around the excess part. So that just means that it's gonna stay nice and snug in there and you don't have to worry about it fraying. So once you've got a couple of good wraps going on, it should sit in place. And then you just continue all the way around till you get to the end of your ring. So here I've run out of twine, so I need to add more, and I'm just going to finish it off by tying a knot. I'm going to keep the excess again and hold it out to the side like we did at the start. I'm also going to do the same thing when I tie on my new piece. So you'll have two pieces of, pieces of excess twine, which you're going to try and coordinate and hold. And then again, just start the wrapping process. So that just makes sure it's nice and snug. And again, you don't have to worry about it fraying. Uh, sorry about the camera angles here, guys. It was really hard to film and do, but I hope it gives you an idea of what I did. When you get to the end, it's just a matter of tying it off. 
leave yourself a bit of excess twine so that you can wrap it around a couple of times because we are just going to glue it down. For that, I'm just using some PVA glue here. I've got a little paintbrush to paint it on. And when I rewrap it around, I'm sort of trying to wedge it in between the twine I've already put there so that it can hold it in place. Now I've gone over the whole handle with the PVA glue. Um, it's going to dry nice and clear and give it a bit of extra durability. Here I'm just working on the doors. I was gonna use some rattan, but I didn't quite have enough. So as I mentioned before, I've got this Hessian table runner, which I'm using. I'm glad I kept the glass um, that I took out because turns out I'm just gonna use that to wedge the Hessian in place. I'm not gonna staple it in or glue it in or anything like that, um, just so it can be removed if you decide you just want the glass. Now I'm using the little plastic wedges that came with it and wedging that back in behind the glass and the hessian. So that's enabled me to keep it nice and taut. I did end up gluing, uh, just using some super glue, the top edge in of the hessian, just so I could pull it taut as I um, put the glass in, as that was the one thing I was finding difficult to do. Um, so look with this, you could have just stapled it in. Um, I've done before where I've just gotten a thin bit of plywood and also adhered it to the back so it just depends whatever you want to do um, but this just was convenient easy and as you can see it turned out really well okay so the paint is all dry it's nice and smooth inside finally um, the bleach is done we've neutralized it uh, so just time to give it a quick sand all over which i'm just using my mouse sander for uh, before we go ahead with the whitewashing all right, so next up we're going to whitewash this piece. I'm just going to use the chalk paint that I used on the interior by Canterbury Blue. It's the fresh white. We just mix some of that with some water. I'm just using a bowl here to put it in and a rag. So I'm just going to go for a very subtle whitewash. So very little paint, a lot of water. And you can just play with the different ratios until you have a mixture that you're happy with. Um, you can always start light. You can put more layers on. You can always add paint. So just start with the mix, see how you feel and go from there. So I ended up adding a little extra paint to my original mixture. As you can see, the first couple of strokes, they were a bit translucent. So after I added that bit of extra paint, you can see that now it's a lot more milky. I'm just using a regular paintbrush to apply it. And you want to just do that all over and then let it sit for a good five minutes before you start rubbing it off. At that point, you wanna grab your damp rag and start to just gently rub off the paint. Now, obviously, the harder you press, the more paint you're gonna rub off. So you wanna start off, first of all, with a nice gentle pressure and then work up from there. So it might be a little bit hard to see, but we've got a really nice light whitewash on the piece. Here's it in the sun. Now I haven't done the middle section, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that now. But if you can see, this might be a bit too bright, but just that one coat, it's giving it a beautiful, nice light whitewash. So we'll keep going, we're gonna do the middle. Um, we'll let it dry for a bit and then I'll see if I might do another layer or not. Next, we're going to do some top coating on our piece. Uh, I'm just using the Cabot's Clear Water Based in the Satin. Uh, first of all, you're going to want to mix it up. Now, make sure you mix it, don't shake it because it's going to create unnecessary bubbles. So, I've just got a Paint stick for that. Make sure it's clean. The rest of uh, you can use a uh, paintbrush, sponge, whatever you like to get it on. I've got both of those here. I'm actually just going to use the tin and I've got one of these sponge applicators. Um, I just got it from Bunnings. There's literally only one pack and it comes with like five different sizes. I really like these for applying the top coats I find it's very even very easy and it doesn't make any bubbles like sometimes the rollers can do so just give it a good stir and just 
just like that, we are ready to go. sure can so after we've top coated the whole piece you'll notice that the wood has changed color just slightly uh, so that's why I really like doing the bleach and the whitewash prior to doing any top coat or any furniture wax because it does slightly change the color um, once it's applied so um, I find this is the best way to get the most natural look um, so just to zoom in step in so you can see a little bit closer this is just what it looks like now it is still drying um, so we're going to leave that for today. I'm going to do a couple of coats on the top and the shelf. Um, a couple extra coats, I should say, because they're high wear areas. Um, the wet rest, I'm just going to go over with some furniture wax once just the first coat has dried. We haven't looked at them for a while, but they are the doors and they're also just drying. Now to remove any drawers with these kind of railings, just hold up the right tab and hold down the left one at the same time and it'll slide right out. So when I pulled the drawers out, I noticed I had a bit of excess on the edges there, which I was expecting. Um, so I'm just going around now with my sander and just sanding that back to natural um, so I can go over with the whitewash nice and evenly. I'm going to paint the insides of these drawers as well. So we'll tape that up. Uh, still a fair bit of work to do, but basically start here. I've already done the others and it sands right off. Okay, so as you can see, there's a little bit of overflow here as well, which I totally expected. Um, so I'm just going to go across and clean that all off and I'm going to sand the edges just this little bit here like I've done on the edge of the rest of the piece because you will kind of see when the door is shut you'll just see the bottom peeking through so I want to make sure that matches the rest of the piece. In the inside here I'm not going to bother to do anything with. It's a great stain and you're never going to see it the doors um, once the drawers are in. So that's going to stay. I just want the edge nice and clean. I'm just using my sander. I'm going in there with it to make it a little bit easier. But I'm going to go back in there afterwards with my block sander just manually um, so that I can make sure the edges stay nice and crisp. Because you want it to look nice as well. Even if you're not always going to see this part. Alright, so now I'm just going back in with my sanding block to clean up the edges. You can see here I've just started a little bit compared to here. It's a little bit uh, messy still. Um, but basically I've just got an old sanding block which I've saved. I'm just using some fine sandpaper wrapped over the top of that to use um, to make sure I get those sharp, nice edges. Alright, so the edges are all done. So now I'm just going to whitewash that and the edges of these drawers here which I haven't quite gotten to. So now it's time to paint the drawers. Um, as you can see inside, there's a ton of these little groove things for the old school CDs, which no one uses anymore. So I am just using some of the White Knight Squirts um, paint and prime in the flat white. I find that just the easiest way to get the job done without too much of a headache. Okay, so looking back at the drawers, you can see there's quite a bit of bleed through. So look, I really did kind of expect this. I was just being a bit lazy. Um, so that's what it looks like if you do not prime or prep your piece properly. You'll get bleed through and it will look terrible. So I'm going to wait till that dries, sand it a bit and go back in there with my stain blocker, the Dixie Bell Boss, which you saw me use earlier before I go any further. As you just saw on the two smaller drawers, we had a lot of bleed through, um, so not ideal. And look, rookie error, I totally knew that would happen, but I was just being a bit lazy and hoping to get away with a quick spray. Um, so on this center drawer, um, we've gone in first 
with the Dixie Bell Boss. This is going to stop any odors, any stains, any bleed through. So go ahead, put your first layer of this on. You can do a couple of layers if you think it's particularly likely to bleed through. Um, I'm just gonna do the one, I've done a thick coat. And um, you can see it's streaky, it goes on kind of thick and a bit streaky it smells real bad um, but look it works awesome so get that on your piece before you chuck on whatever color you desire um, i've done it tonight so that it is ready to go in the morning and i can go ahead and get cracking and put everything back together so now that that's all dry i can go in there with my chalk paint and paint the drawers i'm going to do this one and go back and do the smaller ones as well it ended up taking three coats on each to make it look smooth, which is what I ended up doing on the interior as well. Okay, so while I'm waiting for the drawers to dry, I'm going to start putting the hardware back on to the doors and screw the shelves back in. So we can start putting it all together, getting it ready for our final wax. I'm about to go ahead now and put on my second layer of the top coat. I'm just going to do the top part here and the shelf. Uh, in between your coats, you're going to want to give it a light sand. I'm just using a really fine uh, steel wool piece and I'm just going to go over it just like this, just to rough up the surface slightly um, so the second coat's got something to adhere to. While we're waiting for that to dry, I just wanted to show you the difference of the whitewash before and after you put your top coat on. Okay, so two of the hinges on the doors were broken and unable to be salvaged. So um, I couldn't actually find any hinges exactly the same. So we have bought a couple of these from Bunnings. I did go to Mitre 10 and got a couple of other ones and they didn't fit. Um, so we'll see what these ones look like inside and if they're going to work. So the hinges worked perfectly, so all there's left to do now is to put everything back together. Once I had it all together, I just went over everything with some furniture wax. Like I said, the exterior parts, I didn't do the second coat of the cabots, so I just wanted to do that so it's complete and I know it's going to last. <laughs> 